On this video, I'm taking a look at Honey Buzz in a full detail review. 100% organic strategy. Really? Hmm, I'll be the judge of that. Hello, I'm Luke Hector, thank you for joining me on another video. If you like what you see after watching this, then please feel free to share it on social media and give it a like and a thumbs up and consider subscribing, I'd be very grateful. And before we get stuck in, no, I'm not making a beeline for this game. No, I'm not seeing what all the buzz was about. And of course, the obligatory. Not the bees! Ah! The puns have been done to death. You're not funny. Spring has sprung in the woods of Sweetwater Grove, but something is different this year. The bees have discovered their own system of economics. The queen has a plan to open a stand in the woodland market. If the bees sell their honey, maybe the bears and other woodland creatures will leave the hive alone and the bees will find peace and prosperity at last. What, is there a secret war going on? I don't know. In Honey Buzz, you are one of Her Majesty's accountants entrusted to efficiently manage your own portion of the hive and worker bees. By assigning your worker bees to expand the hive, you will create empty cells for storing different nectars. Eventually, those nectars will produce honey, which you can then sell at the bear market or use to complete orders for other woodland critters. Which one of you will become the chief architect of the Queen's new economy? Prove your value to Her Majesty by working wisely and strategically, and don't forget to compete in the Queen's contests. At the end of the game, whoever has made the most money wins and is appointed the head of the new economic bee empire. Honey Buzz is at its core an economic game, but it's done through a mixture of tile lane and worker placement. You have bee workers that you can put on spaces around the board in order to collect more tiles that you will then place into your hive. You can connect it in pretty much whatever way you like, but what you're aiming to do is create empty cells. This is where you create a space or a gap surrounded by various icons that give you special abilities when they trigger. They trigger as soon as you create the empty cell in full. Whether you're going to decide to create the cell quickly with only just a couple of abilities going off is up to you. You might decide instead to create a cell with a ton of abilities going off at once for one big powerful move. These abilities allow you to gain more money, potentially more workers, sell at the market, or probably most importantly, go and forage in the nearby fields for the nectar itself. Once you've got the empty cell, the combination of banners around the empty cell dictates what type of nectar you can grow in it, and thus what type of honey it produces. Once that honey is produced, you can then sell that honey at the nearby market, either for its monetary value or to complete orders which will give you endgame scoring points. If you can't find the nectar that you're after while you're foraging, you can instead collect pollen, which is just a universal thing that you can sell at the market for cash but the more you sell at the market, the more the value goes down because supply and demand. A space only requires one worker bee to begin with, but if you want to go back there or if an opponent wants to visit, then they have to place one more bee than was there previously. So if I go there for one bee, an opponent has to put two bees, and if I want to go back there after them, I have to put three bees down. There are no rounds in this game as such. You choose when you want to collect back your workers. As such, it's a very dynamic system in terms of what spaces are blocked and how many bees you're going to need at a particular time. The game end is triggered when one of two conditions occurs. Either four of the five items that can be sold, honey or pollen, have reached their lowest price, or two of the three order piles of cards have been completely drained. At which point, everybody totals up how much money they've got, and of course, it's an economic game, so what do you think happens to the person with the most money? Of course! Starting with duration, Honey Buzz quotes 45 to 90 minutes on the box, it's a fairly wide area, and from 1 to 4 players. 45 to 90 minutes is actually pretty accurate. I don't see anybody playing this game in less than 45 minutes unless possibly you're playing it solo, but 90 minutes should be the absolute max this game takes. Even with 4 of you and the potential for some downtime, turns can be quite fast as all you have to do is decide if you're collecting workers back or just putting them down on the space, and you've only got 5 spaces to choose from, therefore 5 tiles, so you should have a reasonable idea as to what tile you're going after. 90 minutes should be your absolute max to get a four player game of this wrapped up, which is pretty good going compared to the usual norm. The setup doesn't take too long either, you should be up and running with about 10 minutes once you know the game rules of course. You've got to set up everybody's individual player board with a unique configuration depending on whether you're playing the basic game or a slightly more advanced one, but other than that, the board, the cards, the various pieces nearby, they don't take very long to set up, you should be able to get it done reasonably quickly. The rulebook is, in my opinion, nothing short of stellar. It is beautifully laid out. Everything is sectioned off in the right place. You've got setup diagrams, you've got game overviews, you've got detailed descriptions of each action with pictorial references, a decent, easy to read font, lots of color, lots of beautifulness thrown through it with the advanced variant and the solo mode kept at the back. It really is a solid production. 
And did I mention, hmm, linen finished rule books? I like linen finished rule books. You're not sleeping with it, are you, right? But if I could just peel myself away from the rule book for a second, you, basically this game is not difficult to learn. I started at the back of the rule book, went all the way through, and learned it within a matter of minutes. It really wasn't difficult. It seemed a waste of time for me to actually set the game up and do my two-handed walkthrough that I tend to do when learning the game, because by the time I was done with one turn, it's like, Oh, this makes complete sense. All right, I didn't really need all that then. There's probably videos on the internet for it as well, but frankly, I don't think you even need them. It really is a pretty simple game to get through. We're talking the same weight level as something like, say, Raccoon Tycoon, another lightweight economic game. So if you think that this is going to be 100% organic strategy, don't feel that that means it's going to be 100% difficult to learn. It certainly isn't. For tactics and strategy, this game doesn't take long for you to kind of grasp what's going on, really. Everybody understands the gist of an economic game. You sell as high as you can, you buy as low as you can. Although here, you're not buying, you're producing it and then you're selling it as quick as possible before the prices start coming down. The order cards don't seem worth it though until you get to the later part of the game. If you've got to commit two pieces of honey and all it gets you is eight or nine points, then why don't you just sell the two bits of honey on the market for seven money and six money a piece? That's 13 versus nine. Suddenly the order card doesn't really seem worth it. But then as the prices start coming down, suddenly the order cards become a better deal. So pretty much it progresses the same way every game. If you're focusing on order cards from the very beginning, unless one of the contest cards says that you should that's probably not the most efficient way to play. There's also not really a lot of different strategies that you can approach with in this game. You've got the accounting tiles, which you could try and spam as much as possible because they give you five money a piece, but then other than that, you are going to the market early and then going to the order cards later. That's kind of it. Yes, you've got different tiles that you can build your hive up with, but you're gonna need a bit of everything, really. You try surviving this game with one worker. Yeah, I double dare you. You're gonna need more workers. Okay, and then you're definitely gonna want some money tiles at some point, because you're gonna need to spend a little bit of money to make money, if you know what I mean. But then you're gonna need to forage for the nectar if you're gonna produce honey. You're gonna have to get those market tiles, because otherwise you'll never visit the market, period. And you're also going to need to get the production tiles so you can actually make the honey in the first place. So it's not like you can really say, I'm going to spam this tile or spam this tile other than the accountancy one, because you kind of need a bit of everything. It's more about timing. So unfortunately, that does mean that this game does feel a little bit linear and a little one note pretty much every time you play. It's not like when I played game two, game four, game five, that I felt like, right, I'm going to approach this really differently. It's like, no, nah, you're kind of doing the same shtick every time. It's just a case of how you react to the market itself and what the other players are doing. Now, you can play this in a basic version or an advanced variant. The basic version has the nectar face up to begin with, whereas the advanced version has the nectar face down. And essentially, you look at the nectar as you go through. You don't reveal what it is unless you're going to collect it. And so, there's a slight memory aspect, a slight bluffing aspect to it, but this is apparently how the original designers wanted it to be. So they said like, all right, this is the variant we want, but then they had some pushback from people and okay, they came up with the basic version and they said this one will be a variant in the book. I'm glad we had the pushback really, because frankly, I don't see why I would play the advanced variant. Now, I seem to be a minority on this apparently. You know, I've asked people about this and they've said, no, we really like the advanced variant, we like to use it. So fair enough, you have the option and you can play it, but honestly, I don't get why we need this added little memory aspect to the game. It just adds extra randomness, which it doesn't really need, and the basic version is easier to teach in that regard as well. I'd like to know where the nectar is. I don't quite see why the bees would suddenly go to a bit of pollen and then like not reveal it to anybody else, unless you're doing an Eddie Izzard sketch. Brian, where's the pollen? <laughs> You can also tackle the solo mode, which has very minimal upkeep. It's very easy to operate and not a great deal amount of rules to add in, but it's essentially a beat your own point score, although you do have those contest cards to aim for as well. In fact, there's also a minimum requirement to achieve a certain amount of points on the contest cards, as well as get a decent amount of points at the end. You've also got the annoying drone meeples that can block spaces for a fair length of time. That gets on your nerves, but other than that, the solo mode is fine. I don't think it's one that I would want to come back you that often. I'd rather play this as a two or three player game and have the, the sort of race against other players. Here you're essentially just racing the AI deck while it slowly drains the price of the uh, resources and the order cards, but you're just basically doing your own little puzzle. So we might have tripped over a little bit on tactics and strategy, but when it comes to aesthetics, Ooh, you get looking. You're hot. 
very hot indeed. This was put on my top 10 beautiful games list recently that I did with Board Game Perspective. Seriously, this is a beautiful looking game. It is just oozing with color and vibrance everywhere. In fact, you look at the board with the bees on there, I can come up with my own Pixar movie for them. I can literally think of a voice cast that I would do for half of these characters. The board is so sublime and detailed and colorful that I would love to have that artboard on my wall just as it is. Nothing on it, no nectar or anything, just that board. The order cards are the same as well. As I said, the rule book is linen finished. It looks beautiful. And even in the retail version of the game, you get some decent pieces for the other components like pollen and the nectar and everything like that. And you've got wooden bee meeples as well. If you decided to upgrade to the deluxe add-on for the cosmetics, you get gummy honey in a sense, which is cool, except they stick to the inside of baggies, which is kind of annoying. And you do have uh, some upgraded pollen bits, but these are just cosmetic only. Don't feel that you have to get the deluxe edition. Honestly, the retail version will more than justify the cost of the game by just how good it is. It scores top marks for components and art. In terms of immersion, this is kind of more of an abstract game. Yes, it certainly does put you in that setting with the idea that, okay, right, so I've got to build my hive, then I've got to go forage for nectar, get the nectar, then I produce honey, and then I go and sell it. So within the world that it's created, there is a decent thematic sense here and some immersion, although I would probably question that when it comes to that advanced variant, as I mentioned earlier. But as you're playing it, you're building up the hide just to get little bonuses. It feels a little bit more abstract than you might have expected from how glossy it looks, but to be honest, for an economic game, it does a pretty sweet job. I don't expect economic games to be that thematic anyway, especially when half the time they deal with coal and iron and all that stuff. So at least to give me a nice colorful world where you see these little wooden critters buying the honey and you've got your little bee meeples and everybody's making bee jokes every five seconds. It's like, yeah, it keeps you in that world. It immerses you just fine, but don't go into this expecting the most rich dramatic experience ever. But for longevity, we do get a bit of a weakness here, and it goes back to the tactics and strategy that I mentioned before, where each game kind of feels the same. Apart from deciding whether I'm gonna spam accountancy tiles or just play the game normally, I don't really feel that each game is that differentiated from each other. There's only so much you can do for replay value in an economic game, I will admit. I mean, Raccoon Tycoon, as I mentioned before, doesn't exactly do much for replay value either, but, Again, I would have liked maybe just a few extra branching paths that they could do. The best that the game does is that it gives you that configuration card to decide how you start your hive, but that's not the biggest change really. The basic card gives you a predetermined setup with the uh, bonuses in specific locations and everybody will start with the same configuration regardless. And you do have a lot of cards in there, so fair enough. But whether I build my hive like, you know, like a weird spider thing or whether I branch off in like a tree branch type thing. It's not exactly dramatically changing the way the game plays, it's just a case of how efficient can I be with those tiles. The order cards, they're generic, there's no player powers, there's nothing like that. You feel just like everybody else. Everybody else is on the same like wavelength as you, they're on the same level, and so you kind of feel like you've played this game once and then you're happy to put it down for a while and you don't necessarily feel like you want to play it again straight after because you're just rinsing and repeating. So in summary, Honey Buzz is a really fun game, and I know I've given some negatives here and there, but what it gets right, it gets right so well. Like, really well. It's a light game, therefore it needs to not take too long. It doesn't. 90 minutes max with four players, and chances are it'll take you less time than that once you're familiar with it. It needs to be simple to play, Brilliant. It's got a fantastic rule book. It is simple to play. I can teach this in a matter of minutes to most gamers off the bat and newer gamers might just need something a little simpler to then wane onto this. But yeah, we're talking pretty straightforward here. So again, major plus points. It is one of the most beautiful games I have seen in recent years. So it's like appealing to the eye. So even if you're waiting for your turn, you've just got so much nice stuff to look at that it's going to help to immerse you in that setting, even though it's kind of abstracted to a point so I don't place too much waiting on the immersion here. Where this game falters a little bit though is the tactics and strategy. As fun as the game is, 
doesn't lend itself well to branching paths or replayability. And that's kind of where this drops a couple of marks. This had a potential to be a Seal of Distinction level game, and it certainly was heading that way at first, just from opening the box and reading the rules and then going through the playthrough. But then I suddenly realized on subsequent plays that it does suffer a little bit in that regard. You will have fun playing this game, and I do have fun playing this game. But once I've played it, I'm kind of good. I can put it down for a bit, I can wait a bit, and then suddenly, all right, I'll bring it out again. It does have the solo mode, it does have two variants to play, so it's not like it doesn't get any marks for longevity or, or tactics and strategy. It's just that it kind of falls shy of the distinction level mark because of these faults. So overall, I'm giving Honey Buzz a solid 8 out of 10. It is a great game and definitely worth a seal of endorsement. It is certainly another like great title by Elf Creek Games who are seriously coming into their own right now. I've already got Atlantis Rising on my shelf that I enjoy. This is another one that um, I'm not sure if it will stay in the collection, but I'm certainly tempted to give it to my Dice Cafe nearby once we reopen in the UK because I think it will do pretty well there as a library title. But I'm also got the... Was it Merchants of the Silk Road or whatever it's called? I forget what it's called, but the uh, the new one that they've kickstarted, I've ordered that as well. So Elf Creek is certainly a publisher that you want to keep an eye on. Certainly, just from a visual standpoint, all their stuff looks gorgeous, but they haven't put out a bad title yet, to my knowledge. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be keeping an eye on Elf Creek, and I think you lot should as well. And if this game sounds like your thing, then consider grabbing it from zatu.co.uk, where you can get 5% discount if you use my code in the description. However, until next time, that's my review on Honey Buzz. If you like what you see, consider subscribing and please share this out on social media. Get the exposure out there. It would mean so much to me. Remember to support small creators as well. And until next time, remember, it's only a game. Bye for now.